All right, so welcome back to Module 5, Providing Value to the First-Time Home Buyer. I uh, would like to say that during the break, I did have a young, uh, newer agent come up to me and tell me that I should be ashamed of myself for saying out loud that I didn't like helping new home buyers. Um, she said she loved them, and I said I love them too because they become seasoned buyers down the road. Um, so let me reiterate one more time, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just know my limits and know my market, all right? So let's talk about how you can actually provide value to the first time home buyer, all right? So with the emergence of a whole bunch of new websites and do we even need to mention the Z word? You've got Zillow, you've got iBuyers, you've got Realtor.com, all of these tech savvy Gen X and Gen Y uh, people, and to some extent, the Gen Z group, um, are all constantly being in, uh, attacked by real estate technology innovations, all right? So it can be real easy for you to be threatened and ask the question, are real estate agents going to be around in the future, which we could do an entire one-hour discussion on this but what i really want to tell you is don't let technology push you out there's always going to be buyers that need guidance and if you don't believe me even those of us that are the most technically savvy and i would consider myself pretty savvy got a degree from the military in computer programming so i've been in computers 40 years um, I still get confused uh, with websites and sometimes go, you know what, it's just easier to call somebody. And it frustrates me that a lot of these new companies do not use true customer service. Well, that only goes to prove that technology is only going to go so far. Now, I know you can all talk about AI, um, the artificial intelligence, and can they answer questions and yeah, sure, but there's always going to be some exceptions. So I do believe that our industry is changing. However, there's still a place for you guys to be in it. All right. And what you need to do is continue to prove that you have value to these home buyer clients, specifically the first time home buyer clients who actually, once again, don't know what they don't know. So here's a couple of ways that I feel that you can provide your home buyer uh, some value. The biggest one is be intimate of the knowledge of your local market. See, that's where I think the technology is actually not going to be as good. These technology companies have to do thousands and thousands of transactions to make money. And that means they have to be what they call scalable and work throughout the entire United States. Well, on a macro scale, that may be great. On the micro scale, specifically about, you know, some little city or portion of a city that you work, this is where you're going to be at value. You got to know the best school district, know what's uh, going on in the market. Uh, is there new commercial developments going on? How are the tax prices? Are they going up? Are they going down? All of this inside scoop of details about your specific community can help these first time home buyers make a more informed and more pinpointed decision over any of these technology companies, all right? So have an intimate knowledge of your local market. The next thing I'm going to talk about is upping your marketing game. We've talked a little bit about that, but I still am going to stress, and I ask my own agents this, and I'm going to ask you, and if you're at home listening uh, online, think about this. I don't expect anybody to answer, but the question that I typically ask everybody now is what business are we in? And everybody wants to yell out real estate. 
I want to disagree with you and say that we're actually in the marketing game now. We are actually in the marketing game. You know, you've got to make sure that people know who you are, know where you are, know how to get a hold of you, what you do, what you specialize in, all of these items. We lost the keys to the kingdom 20 years ago. We can piss and moan and whine and cry about it. And I see people all the time about, I wouldn't pay Zillow to market my own ads and I'm not buying. I get that. But unfortunately, that's where the stream is. So you better turn around and learn to swim the right way right now. That involves that we are now marketing people. You better up your marketing game. You know, you can tell people, oh, I search the MLS or I put a house on the MLS. Well, is that all you do now? Because there's a lot more marketing. How many of you out there by show of hands actually create a website dedicated to each property? I do, or I did. I don't anymore. So in other words, I have websites still to this day, the domain that might be www. Let's see if I can remember the last one I did. www.1426 East Highway 39.com. All right. On that one page, it was a commercial property. On that uh, page, I put a bunch of extra pictures. I put maps. I, I put all their uh, profits and loss sheets and all kinds of stuff. On top of that, now I marketed that website. That website actually was on their custom made sign that they had. I had a big four by eight Lexan uh, pole sign in the yard buried with four by four posts and I marketed that website. So you're gonna have to up your marketing game. And that means you're going to have to use technology to do it, all right? This next thing I want to talk about is building a strong network, building a strong network. What that means is your first time home buyers are going to need to know that you know a lot of other people that's going to be used in their process and that you have the ability to get to them, help refer your clients to them. All of these things are going to be important to a first time home buyer. Like home inspectors, they're not going to know who a home inspector is. If you've got a uh, network of home inspectors, lenders, those are going to be somebody you can help them with. And then any of the other things, photographers for pictures, property managers, all of these network of other professionals are going to be a value that you are going to add on top of just searching the MLS, all right? The last one is I want you to handle all the hard stuff. You need to make this transaction as easy and seamless as possible. Remember, they are just going to be completely overwhelmed with the process to begin with. That's if it goes good. What happens if it goes bad? What happens if there's an appraisal issue? What happens if there's home inspection out the yin yang that you've got to write? All of these things are going to cause problems and you need to be the one that's going to handle the hard stuff. You know, volunteer to talk to their lender for them. Volunteer to talk to the home inspector. You may even help them schedule the home inspection. All of these things, get checklists for them. Get guides. Here's what you should be doing. Create a checklist of step one, step two, get a pre-approved, you know, search a house, blah, 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 blah. Have a checklist for them that says, here are the things that we really want in a house. Sounds funny. I know that, but what's going to happen is these people are so excited. They get in their first house and they're going to go, this is beautiful. And you're going to go, uh, didn't you tell me you needed four bedrooms or three bedrooms, or you wanted two stories and maybe a bad example for first time home buyers. But the point I'm getting at is 
they may even forget once they get there what they're looking for. Plus, that's going to help you kind of whittle away at some of the listings that they don't or can't qualify for. Nothing more disheartening than a first-time home buyer all of a sudden to call you and go, dude, there's this beautiful house. It's like 750. We want to go see it. Well, you can't afford it, so why are we wasting our time? Look at your checklist. Nowhere on there did you check a horse barn or a pool. So, you know, handling the hard stuff and providing them some of these things are going to be key to upping your game in all of this to help gain the trust. Now, there's a couple myths that I have heard about that I want to go through because I, as an agent, and as I tell my agents, you guys should always be prepared for the objection busters, right? You know you're going to get something, so you might as well start preparing for it. Now, here's a couple of things that I've heard from my agents that love to deal with first-time homebuyers. The biggest single misconception that they don't get is when they see the price and then they see it listed by an agent, their first thought is, well, if I do it myself, I can save on the agent's commission. Meaning, oh, if I don't have an agent that works for me, they're not going to pay him. Do you guys understand where the problem in there that lies? Because the buyer's agent commission comes out of the listing commission, which is already pre-negotiated. And I'm just going to make up numbers here. Let's say the guy was really good and negotiated a 10% real estate commission, and he's going to give five to the buyer agent. If the buyer doesn't have an agent, that doesn't mean he's given five back to the seller and the seller can now accept a lower price. No, it just means the listing agent gets the entire commission. All right. So one of the myths that you need to probably head off at the path with these guys is let me help you. I get paid by the other side. I'm going to add the caveat there, as long as it's listed in our MLS and probably any state out there's MLS, if you get paid by the other side, you're certainly not going to get paid by your buyer's agency. All right. So think that that's one of the myths I hear. A lot of times I hear, oh, you just agents, all you're trying to do is get a quick sale. You don't really care. Wrong. Remember, we work by referral. If I screw you just to get to this commission today, is it going to cost me five or six commissions in the next couple years? No, I don't want to just get to a sale. I do like a sale. I do like to get paid. But I'm not going to sacrifice you on the altar just to get this commission. I want to do what's right by you so that you go, hey, buddy, we used Raymond and get the referral. All right. The next one I hear all the time is people call and they go, hey, uh, our lease is expiring at the end of the month. And uh, I think we should start hunting houses now. Really? Really? You're, we're going to do this in two weeks? You know, now I understand this is going to be a hard one to combat because they may not even come to you until that two week period is, hey, we got to find starts. Uh, we end in two weeks. Time starts now. Go. So that might be one that's going to be hard to combat because they may already be in that short fuse by the time you get to them. But hopefully this is going to be something where you can go, look, dude, we need to start maybe six or eight weeks or two months out to start working on this process. You know, you've got financing issues in this market anywhere in the United States. We've got just an issue finding a problem in that $190,000 range that you want. So let's start early. And then if we have issues, we can worry about your lease at a longer time. Next myth, number four. Oh, I, I looked at an online calculator and we can certainly afford 200000 I don't need to talk to a loan officer. No, 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 you can't. You know, 
Um, I am sure that you were probably painted a rosy picture on that calculator and may have forgot that you have a collection on your credit. Oops, yeah. Oh, well, they'll, they'll never find that or it's not that big a deal. It is. So you guys need, you guys being new home buyers, you guys need to talk to a lender to get pre-approved to make sure that we have the right DTI, to make sure you have enough cash down, to make sure that your credit's good. Just because a calculator, calculator <laughs> plus tax, hate it when that happens. Just because a calculator says that you can afford 200 grand, you may not be able to afford 200 grand. So get pre-approved. Now, there's some other things here that I want to talk about, about how to add value. Um, help for first time home buyers navigating the process. Freddie Mac has actually created a resource page to help first time home buyers. These are enable them to overcome several different barriers that the first time home buyer may choose. Now, I have attached a resource guide to this uh, course. You can pull it up uh, if you're at home. If you're here in class, it's just one of those handouts. If you're listening at home, it's a PDF document attached. It has a resource list. And then I actually also put the link to the Freddie Mac page of where I got this resource list. And here are a bunch of resources. Um, that resource list, I think, contains like 18 or 20 different. We're certainly not going to go through all 18 of them. I put a few on here. You can see that there was a Help Starts Here Resource Now Center that specially involved the post-COVID environment. There are step-by-step uh, -step mortgage guides in both English and Spanish. Those can be gotten and given to your client. Uh, there is a flow chart for the first steps for home buyers. There's an ebook that talks about uh, building opportunities and the future of the home and uh, new builds, things like that. There is a uh, PDF document called Credit Smart. It is a financial and home ownership education resource. It helps them kind of walk through all the finances to make sure that they understand, oh, you got to add some repair costs in, or you got to add some uh, home HOA fees in. There's a homeowner's checklist in both Spanish and English as well. And then there are more resources out there on that guide that you could use as these collateral pieces to make yourself one, more of informed about the product that, and clients that you're choosing. And two, to give to those clients so that they, in fact, can help do some of their own education so that when you're out there looking for homes and making offers and getting financed, that they kind of understand. All right. So this is one of the key issues with first time home buyers: making yourself more valuable providing value and communicating that value to your client. All right, let's do module six.